Hello everyone, this is student Dave and uh, welcome back. So this is going to be the MATLAB implementation of the fly tracking. Well, this is going to be the fly detection, the image processing used to detect it. And then the next video I'll show you how you do the tracking, okay? So, uh, yeah, here is a bunch of flies, right? And so what we want to do is we want to find where these flies are. Now, it looks easy. Um, one thing to know with, vis with uh, anything we're doing image processing, anything easy for your eyes is really hard for a program to do, right? Okay, and so like we said, we're trying to track these guys, and you might think, okay, we'll just do anything that's dark, take anything that's dark. Well, that might work. Um, you could just do a tracking where you minus anything that's light and you'll get the dark. Um, what that will do is for sure capture these guys, capture these guys and whatnot. But it might not capture these guys. And if these guys ever get kind of close at a different angle, you won't catch them either. And so what we want to do is we want to find the best way possible to extract these flies even when they're overlapping. I mean, it, we probably won't be able to get this one. But say they're overlapping at kind of orthogonal angles. We might want to say, or they're kind of just overlapping at their heads or their tails. We might want to say, well, you know, rather than thinking of this as one single continuous blob, and we take the average of where that's at, let's see if we can find the find something about the center of mass of each one, even though they're overlapping. Because again, this is a three-dimensional video. I mean, three-dimensional. Um, environment but we're projecting it on 2d in the image so there's a lot of overlap and so we'd like to minimize the uh, errors in tracking when that happens right so let's load this up uh, load up the videos you so I don't have the rights to the videos so you have to go get I can't distribute them so you have to go get the videos um, you can get them here the fly videos at Shutterstock the free version isn't that great of quality so you have to tweak the code a little bit I had to but this code works pretty much uh, really well but you know you might want to tweak it a little bit anyway so here we go let's look at this so we load in the videos this is the trick for creating the list right and this is the function for defining the Laplace and the Gaussian filter that I talked about for blob analysis so let's just look at that real quick so this is what it looks like from top down and here it is it's kinda of like this Mexican hat looking kinda of thing right um, basically it looks like a Gaussian but then it has these uptails around the sides of it and those are really important for getting that blob extraction and so I set it my um, the size of the the mask and the uh, the sigma of the mask to these values the larger the values are the larger the blob is you'll detect and so you can kinda go through scale space of by changing the size of these and to see how your filter works best for whatever it is you're working with like maybe you're working with bigger bugs or different things that have a kind of blob like structure but anyways, this is the one that I use, and it works really well for this situation. Then um, I'm going to define basically into each each x y coordinate for a particular image is going to have a, some set of detections, an unknown number. So I store them in an cell array and just keep adding to that list over and over. There might be nicer ways to do that, but it works pretty well for what I'm doing. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take a look at this. So we load in that image. Um, I'm I load so the images are of course are color images right so there's uh, three layers to the matrices of images and we don't need to work with that we're dealing with this in a black and white situation so I just reduced down the uh, the size of the image to a single uh, matrices then this is it this is the blob convolution so you're convolving the image with the blob filter that Laplace and the Gaussian the log filter and you get your blob extraction then I'm gonna do and so let's just take a look we'll see what that looks like and that's what it looks like for that image. So you see the two flies over here are seen as one, and the program just doesn't do a good job there. But what we get is a bunch of little peaks all over the place. And so while it may look like kind of like these dots, there if you think of this in three dimensions, these are actually peaks, peaks and valleys in a three-dimensional space. And so what we want to do is we're gonna go, well, now that we got these peaks and valleys rather than these these like binary blobs, binary like sections, we can go, well, where are those peaks and valleys? And by treating this in this way, we could kind of find like if hills are near each other, but they're not fully overlapping, we'll see these kind of overlapping hills with peaks on them, two peaks still. And so that's the idea here is that even when they overlap, we might be able to pull out two peaks. Here they're too close and it's not going to work. But you'll see in the rest of this that it actually works a lot of the time. And when they're overlapping, even partially, you'll, you'll get uh, a distinction. When they're fully overlapping, you lose them. And that's just the reality of projecting 3D or you know, 2D for this case. But um, it does a good job and a lot better job than just doing a binary thresholding of the image. But I do threshold this image so that we can just get out 
the the uh, filter works a little bit better. So I treat I uh, remove all those non values that are not interesting, anything confusing for the system, and I apply this really cool program. There's a lot of uh, Extrema finders on MATLAB File Exchange. This one's really good. I like this one. And what it does is basically goes over the 2D map and looks for a local extrema. We're only interested in the max values, so we take those max values and find the coordinates of each of those. Uh, it's a pretty fast function, and you end up with this. So let's take a look what we got. And this is our extraction. So let me just plot this by itself, actually. This is a little more visible. And then... Okay, so... This is, um, these guys in the background, I don't know what that is. It's some artistic rendition. We don't want those. These are the ones we're interested in. And you can see that this, for here, it sucks. <laughs> it doesn't do a good job. But for every other one, it does a really pretty decent job. And it's kind of find the center point of them. And it doesn't start creating two points, like two pieces, because the, the fly is kind of like, it's got like these two parts to it. So m if you had a small blob, you'd end up with two peaks for every fly. And that'll just drastically screw up your uh, tracking. But anyways, here we are. This is our detection. So let's see how that performs. Let's just take a look at that. Make sure you clear your image when you do this iteratively or else it's going to look really slow down your system. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so there we go. We could watch them move in slow motion, right? Now, this is good. Now imagine if we just had these flies flying all by themselves, all over the place, individually, never overlapping. The tracking would be easy. We would just go, okay, well here's a dot. Look at unless as long as we're sampling at a decent rate, look at the dot nearby. Whatever dot's nearby, that's the same that's the same fly. And just do that forever, right? Well that would work. Um, the thing is we don't have that, and a lot of times you don't have that situation is you get stuff like this where the flies cross each other, cross each other's paths. They have biological motion, so you can't just say it's a flying parabola. There's a lot of overlap, there's a lot of detections missing, there's a lot of situations where you have way fewer detections than you have flies, so you have these hanging estimates that don't have anywhere to go. And so, you can't just do a mere look for nearest neighbor, and that's the fly to do the tracking. It's a much harder situation. And so what by using the common filter and the Hungarian algorithm, what we do is we go, where are these flies? Where are they going? Where do I think they're going to be next? And then assign this optimally. And then anything that doesn't work, throw it aside and try again. And that's what we'll do in the next video. But this is just showing the basic uh, blob filtering. It's pretty simple, but frankly, it works for a lot of situations. As long as you have some good pre-processing, maybe you might need to do a Gaussian filter and whatnot. Okay.